All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our friends from Blackbird Vineyards were in the store, and this is an exciting project. Aaron Pot is making the wines, and uh, these are, you know, kind of inspired by the blends of Bordeaux, but the wines very much California. Uh, a couple of them you could, you know, in a blind tasting, pick out as Bordeaux. We started out with the wine from uh, La Rioja, which is the La Rioja in Mendoza, or near Mendoza, sorry, in uh, Argentina. It's a different area, and this is uh, a Torrentes. And Blackbird started in 2003. This is a project they're involved with also with Pablo Mortorel, which is the winemaker for Closiete. Uh, this is a very refreshing wine. These Torrenteses have this lovely perfume, floral note to them, green melon, a green apple fruit with a distinct kind of briny uh, mineral character as well. A bright and zesty wine on the tongue, that green apple, really crisp fruit showing, and that effervescence, that tongue tingly feeling you get on your tongue from these high acid whites. Some perfume floral notes, but not, not too over bearing in the perfume department. One of the reasons I'm not wild about Torrentes or these other really aromatic whites. Uh, they make better dessert wines than they do dry whites. But this one's good and it's $13 a bottle, a really good value. All right, the Blackbird Vineyards Rosé up next. And this is a Sagne Rosé, a cold soak. They use 10 different vineyard sites at Blackbird Vineyards. This wine's a blend of 58% Cab, 22 Merlot, and 20 Cab Franc. and has a lovely richness to the fruit on the nose, kind of cranberry with uh, pretty floral notes. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of spaghetti and meatballs, also kind of ripe tomato maybe nuance here as well. Good amount of that candied red berry fruit on the tongue with a zesty bone dry finish and a tongue tingly minerality. A very good little rosé for $19.50. The Recuerdo Malbec up next from the Uco Valley, and uh, the label means to remember, or the memory or sense of place, and I guess that's what they wanted to instill by the name, Recuerdo, where the wines come from. They're, anyways, this has got a lovely blackberry fruit with dark spices, coffee, a slight vegetal kind of green note to the nose, dark cocoa spice here also, smooth and silky on the tongue uh, with bright blackberry fruit, and that light vegetal note also showing on the finish, roasted coffee and some earth here as well. Very good little Malbec at $20. Uh, the Blackbirds Arise is up next. And uh, this wine was produced for the first time in 2006, and it's inspired by a Pomerol or Saint Emilion. It uses six different vineyard sites, 2,200 cases. Sarah Gott and Aaron Pot were the first winemakers. Gott and Pot. Sarah left in 2004. Aaron has been there ever since. This wine's got 61% Merlot, 27 Cab Franc, and 12% Cabernet. And the bouquet very similar to a right bank wine. You get there that earth, the cigar box spice, dark plum, and you get a little violet note there as well. Minty, kind of sweet herbs, a big and chewy wine on the tongue with lots of plum and currant berry fruit. Really well built here. You know, this wine's got some nice dark spice and licorice, a good bit of tannin. These 2011s, um, kind of a challenging year. This is one of the better ones, especially since it's only $49.50. You know, I liked it almost as much as the $130 wines from this winery. Most excellent juice, a really long finish. The illustration is up next, and this is 75% Merlot, 13 Cab Franc, and 10 Cabernet Sauvignon. It's one of the first wines they made. It's a Pomerol-inspired blend, and good amount of that fine herbs. Kind of a eucalyptus -y note here as well. Some pencil lead coming out on the second day. Dark cocoa, a dead ringer for Bordeaux on the nose. That dark plum and currant berry fruit uh, uh, from the mountains. You get more kind of earthy intensity here. A big but elegant wine on the palate from four different vineyard sites. They use 75% new oak in this, so you do get a good amount of that toasty oak spice, some red currant and dark cherry fruit. Really nice structure here. This wine's got a nice acidity holding everything together and a host of that uh, toasty spice and firm tannins. This wine needs some time, but it's got all the right things in the right proportions here. Most excellent juice. The Paramore is up next, and this is Cabernet Franc, 71%, 19% Merlot, and 10% Cab. This wine has a lovely black coulisse, like uh, raspberry coulisse, like fruit. Pretty violet, minty notes, and black spices, espresso. Really nice complexity on the nose here. All these wines really well endowed. Dark, intense berry fruit, blackberry, violets, uh, bittersweet chocolate, a really long finish, lots of tannins, but lots of fruit here also, and a firm hand of acidity here. This 2010's very well built, long finish, most excellent juice, the Paramore. And then the Contrarian which was my favorite of all of them. I and mean, they're close. I had to go back and forth. And on the next morning, I finally came up with this. It's just a 
hair above the other ones, but uh, they make about 25 barrels of this wine. So um, under 10,000 cases total at Blackwood, they make the wine at Napa Valley Wine Company. This wine's got 48% Cab, 42 Cab Franc, 20 Merlot. It spends 21 months in all French oak. It's the biggest of all the wines. Got a nice amount of that dark plum and currant berry fruit, dark spices, mocha, fresh plowed earth. Really nice nuance in the nose here. And a good hand of that rich, well-endowed fruit showing on the palate. Black cherries, currants, black plum with a firm hand of tan. And it's good acidity here, balanced with a long finish. This wine has everything, just needs some time, most excellent juice, and that's what we had to drink with our friends from Blackbird Vineyards. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.